Welcome to the course Apparel Marketing. In this course, you will be understanding the concepts of fashion because apparel is a major component of fashion. That's why we have to study first fashion. Marketing and then learn how to synthesize and apply these to fashion marketing and environmental scenarios. You will also be able to apply this knowledge to successfully manage a fashion business. This course comprises of five units and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. Let's study the first unit that's introduction to fashion business. As Mark Twain once wrote, clothes make the man. Naked people have little or no influence on the society. It shows the importance of clothes for the man to have influence on the society. This unit comprises of five modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By the end of this unit, students will be able to define fashion, style and design because these are the major components of fashion. Understand the elements of design and fashion. Describe the uniqueness of the fashion business and its nuances. Review statistics and the importance of fashion business. Finally, understand ethical issues in fashion. The first module reviews important definitions associated with fashion business. Whenever a marketer is asked to market a product, the marketer first asks the question, what is the product? he has to market. There is a confusion on the very definition and on which ones are to be included and which ones are to be excluded in the fashion business. Many think and equate fashion to what is shown on FTV, Trends TV, the fashion shows and think it as a latest and western in nature. Hence, this unit will give a conceptual clarity on what is fashion and the major terms in use that are part of fashion business. All the trends, styles, etc. are followed for good looks. Hence, this unit will give a conceptual clarity on fashion and the major terms in use that are part of fashion. All the trends, styles, etc. are followed for good looks and apparel and accessories give that good look. Hence, whenever fashion is thought of, what comes to one's mind is apparel and accessories. Hence, more importance is given to these products in the coming units as part of fashion. As a noun explained in Oxford Dictionary and American English Dictionaries, fashion is a popular trend, especially in terms of styles of dress and ornaments or manners of behavior. Fashion is a popular style or practice, especially in clothing, footwear, accessories, makeup, body piercing or furniture. Fashion is distinctive and often is a habitual trend in style in which a person dresses. As seen, fashion is anything in vogue, particularly in clothing and accessories. It is also a style, a trend in dress, though many more things like the way we live and do things, our lifestyle can also be included in fashion, yet we have to restrict the scope of fashion to apparel and accessories because these things constitute major part of fashion. Today, many electronic products like music players, cell phones and even some soap companies claim the products as fashion products which is true to some extent, but we will restrict again the scope of fashion to clothing, 
textiles and accessories. A style is a prevailing mode of expression in clothing or a particular kind, sort of or type as with reference to form, appearance or character. Again, a style as defined by Kitty Dickerson says, it is a type of product that has one or more specific features or characteristics that distinguish it and make it different from other products of the same type. For example, the crew neck, turtleneck, safari jackets, blazer jackets, either full sleeve or half sleeve shirts, these are all uh, part of styles. Then comes what is design. A design is a creation of a plan or convention for the construction of an object or a system. It is a specification of an object manifested by an agent intended to accomplish goals in a particular environment using a set of primitive components satisfying a set of requirements subject to constraints to create a design in an environment where the designer operates. Design when applied to fashion includes considering aesthetics as well as function in the final form. Variations of a style or individual interpretations or versions of same style are called as design says Kitty G. Dickerson. For example, a cardigan sweater is a distinctive style, but within this style variations like knits, embroideries, pockets, necklines are possible. Fashion and fashion marketing are design centric. Without design there is no fashion and there is no business for fashion that shows the importance of design in fashion. Now, let us start understanding some of the meanings of the major terms used in fashion. In French, haute couture, let us understand. Haute means high and couture is sewing. Hence, haute couture means high sewing or high fashion. For long, fashion clothing was predominantly designed and manufactured on a made to measure or hot couture basis with each garment being created for a specific client. This is made to order for a specific individual taking his individual measurements for a specific occasion or event using high quality expensive fabric using hand executed techniques and giving importance to details. Hence, normally hot couture garments are expensive, but today there are very few who patronize hot couture garments and there are only a few hot couturiers. Now let us understand ready to wear clothing. Ready to wear clothes are a cross between designer clothes and mass produced for the streetwear market. But as not made for common customers and good care is taken in terms of choice, cut of fabric, design and construction. Though they are standardized, the garments are still exclusive. This module reviews the elements of design which forms major components of fashion. Now let us understand what are the elements of design. The main elements of design are color, shape, texture, space and form. Let us understand first the color. Hue that is the technical word for color. Color has values like tint, shade, intensity and saturation. These forms the color. These are a must in elements of design. Then comes the shape. Shape is a two or three dimensional area that stands out from the space next to or around it due to a defined or implied boundary. 
texture is the way a surface feels or is perceived to feel. Space is concerned with the deep within the moment of designated design will take place. Form may be described as any three dimensional object. Form can be measured. The height, the width or the depth can be measured. Form is also defined by light and dark. Now, let us understand what are the elements of fashion. The elements of fashion are again color, silhouette, line and texture. Now, let us understand one by one as again color which is hue is a technical word for color. Color has values like tint, shade, intensity and saturation. The shape and form amount to the silhouette. Line is the mark connecting two points, something stretched between two things. Texture is the way again a surface feels or is perceived to feel. Unlike other businesses, fashion as a product is different. Hence, its marketing management also has to be tailor made accordingly. Now, let us understand why this business is different. The uniqueness of fashion can be put under as follows. It changes, it is cyclical, it is seasonal, creative products, obsolescence factor, high markup and high markdown. These are the uniquenesses of fashion. Let us understand each of these. Fashion changes. Many of us think it changes every day, but it changes as per the changes of preferences and conditions prevailing and other influences during the particular time. At the same time, fashion does not change as frequently as many believe. The short-lived fashions that we think which changes frequently are called as fads and they are not fashions. Fashion changes are evolutionary in nature, not revolutionary. Many times it is the designers and customers who are the initiators of change, but finally it has to be accepted by majority of customers to be effective. Fashion changes follows a pattern like a sine wave. It goes up and comes down and again goes up and comes down. Normally, the fashions which come back again may or may not follow the same style and design. At times, designers get inspired by old fashions and come out with new collections called retro collections or retro fashions. Fashion changes according to seasons. As is well known, weather conditions change as per season and temperature. Temperature varies from 40 degrees plus during summer to minus 40 degrees during winter, particularly in European context. Hence, the colors, styles, fibers, fabric, designs used for summer apparel varies from those used for winter, so also for spring and autumn. As we know, fashion follows four seasons that is spring, summer, autumn, winter. Now, let us come to the next definition. Creativity that is creativity is the backbone of fashion and apparel business. No product looks similar to another product. In the era where a customer wears garments for differentiation and recognition, 
the challenge for designers is to design and produce apparel and accessories innovatively. Many times the merchandise utility value is a strong factor in fashion business. When a consumer emotionally thinks that the product has outlived its utility, he or she changes the product. The consumer frequently changes fashions even though the current product is still in use and goes for a new product. This is what is called product obsolescence. In fashion business, when the product is in vogue and demand, consumers are willing to pay higher prices than the normal cost of production. The markup over the cost price can be two to three times more. When a fashion is not in vogue, the marketers have to reduce it and even some sell at 30% to 70% discount. This module reviews some statistics in fashion. The global apparel market was valued at US $1.7 trillion in 2012 and it employs approximately 75 million people. The world's menswear industry is expected to exceed 402 billion US dollars in 2014. Women's wear industry is expected to pass dollar 625 billion in 2014. That's why if you see women's wear business is higher than men's wear business. The bridal wear market is expected to reach almost 57 billion by 2015 while the children's wear market is expected to reach beyond dollar 185 billion by 2014 marking a 15 percent increase in five years textiles and clothing along with fashion retailing that's why is one of the largest employment provider and contributes significantly to the GDPs of many countries. This module now looks at some of the critical ethical and IPR that is intellectual property right issues that confront the fashion business. Ethics in fashion was connected to fair trade and respect for the workers rights. This meant practices of non-exploitation of raw materials that is paid at a fair price and non-exploitation of producers and also workers that is by payment of fair wages to artisans and workers. The ethical fashion concept is an old one. However, it is gaining increasing popularity in modern times as awareness about environment and conservation increases, cruelty to animals and ethical issues in business rise. Fashion brands are also now increasingly adopting ethical means. Customers are also becoming above all increasingly aware of and demand ethically produced fashion products. The main issues in fashion ethics are cultural appropriateness, fur and leather issues, consumption issues, environmental issues, forgeries and sweatshops. Now we will look at one by one. We will now look at each one of these. In their ongoing search for new, different and exciting looks, fashion designers sometimes go for body image. Virtually all of the models who represent fashion houses are abnormally thin. 
in keeping with the perceived aesthetic preferences of the public. This focus on extreme thinness in women has also been blamed due to eating disorders and poor body image among some women whose bodies do not conform to this idealized image. Fashions that use real animal fur and leather support the fur and leather industry, which is infamous for its inhumane treatment of animals. Fur and leather is acquired either by trapping wild animals and skinning them or by raising animals domestically for their fur. Bringing out a new line of clothing every year encourages fashion enthusiasts to buy new clothes even though they do not really need them. While some people see this as a harmless activity or as a boon to the economy, others believe that it encourages mindless consumerism and materialism. The materials, transportation and production that are involved in the fashion industry all have an impact on the environment. Many synthetic materials are derived from petroleum, while many more natural materials are grown on land that could be used for food production. The main appeal of many fashionable accessories is the brand name. A Gucci bag can be sold many times more than an identical bag made by a competitor by virtue of their image. But forgers take advantage of this fact by creating cheap knockoffs and illegally adding the names of famous and expensive fashion houses. Many fashionable clothes are manufactured by poorly paid people in developing countries. This practice known as sweatshop labor has been scrutinized and condemned by a wide range of critics, especially as young children are employed. The growing complexity of the ethical fashion market is reflected in the development that has occurred from a standpoint of marketing. Currently, fate trade means the adoption of what they call the three P's that is process, product and place. The three P's also represent the development of fair trade marketing to the extent that the market growth of ethical products and brands has been achieved through the development of business focus from process to product to cover the place. Regarding the process, the main function of marketing is to build consumer confidence in the authenticity of the process adopted by the fair trade brand or company. Overall, the company has to follow societal marketing concept where along with profits and business, people and society at large are also taken care of. These rights are the legally recognized exclusive rights to creations of the mind. Under intellectual property law, owners are granted certain exclusive rights to a variety of intangible assets such as musical, literary and artistic works, discoveries and inventions. 
words, phrases, symbols and finally designs. The reasoning for intellectual property right is to encourage innovation without the fear that a competitor will steal the idea and take the credit for it. In general, the types of IPR include patents, copyrights, industrial design rights, trademarks and trade secrets. The fashion industry is an intellectual property intensive industry continually generating and commercially exploiting creative ideas and innovations. Whilst IP is largely intangible, it is similar to any other types of physical property in that under the law it has a legal owner and therefore can be sold, bought or licensed or damaged. In the context of fashion industry, the main focus is kept on trademarks, design rights, copyrights and licensing. Patents rarely arise in the context of fashion design because obtaining patent protection is costly and the standard for obtaining patent protection is very high. Regarding the fashion industry, the main types of IPR are trademarks, copyrights, industrial design rights, licensing and design patents. Now let us discuss each of these terminologies. A trademark is a recognizable sign, design or expression which distinguishes products or services of a particular trader from the similar products or services of other traders. A copyright gives the creator of an original work exclusive rights to it, usually for a limited period. A copyright may apply to a wide range of creative, intellectual or artistic forms or works. Copyrights do not cover ideas and information themselves, only the form or manner in which they are expressed. These rights protects the visual design of objects that are not purely utilitarian. An industrial design consists of the creation of a shape, configuration or composition of a pattern or a color or a combination of patterns and colors in three dimensional form containing aesthetic value. An industrial design can be a two or three dimensional pattern used to produce a product, industrial commodity or handcraft. Licensing occurs when a fashion designer retains ownership of their intellectual property right whilst allowing another party to utilize it on certain terms usually for commercial gain for both parties. Licensing agreements are used in a broad variety of business deals. For example, in merchandising deals where a trademark or design, for example, Mickey Mouse or pop groups is printed on consumer products 
or in export and import deals where a business partner is granted license to trade on a particular brand in a particular country or an a franchisee arrangements for branded fashion retail concessions anyone who invents a new or original ornamental design for a commercial article is entitled to patent protection subject to the terms and conditions of the patent act unlike utility patents design patents protect the look of an object not its function typically design patents are granted within a year and their protection lasts for 14 years in 2002 the european union passed law that provides designers with up to 3 years of unregistered design protection and up to 25 years of registered protection for example alexander wang's robin hobo bag patent number 672962 you have come to the end of this unit to summarize having understood the concept of fashion the nuances of fashion business and its application to business and marketing it's time now to understand how to market fashion and apparel we shall be dealing with these aspects in the next units